Um, my name is Rodrigo Oliveira. I'm a CEO and co-founder of Green Mining. Green Mining is a reverse logistics company that is started inside the 100 plus acceleration program of ABM Web in the end of 2018. Thank you. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Karen McNamara. And hello, Rodrigo. Uh, <laughs> how's he doing? So both Rodrigo and I were invited into the ABM Bev 100 plus global sustainability accelerator and conscious container I founded uh, a while back as a benefit corporation to bring refillable glass bottles back into our US infrastructure and economy. And it was really out of the passion of getting tired of throwing away glass bottles that could, you know, if you've traveled around the world, you've seen refillable systems and why don't we have them here? And so the Conscious Container was founded to really look at the problem and take action, quite frankly. So I'll leave it at that, Scott. Thank you, Rodrigo. So yes, yeah, so you can share your presentation and um, thank you very much. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so uh, I just introduced myself, just saying uh, something else that um, I worked for, from, for 10 years on the consumer good industry. And for the last 10 years, working on projects of engineering of waste disposal on my family company of uh, uh, engineering projects. Uh, I'm also part of a uh, coordinator of the reverse logistics committee of uh, Association of Engineering Center in Brazil and technical advisor at uh, the Circular Economy Hub here as well. Uh, well, as I said, we were born inside a 100 plus acceleration to bring an intelligent reverse logistics and I'll uh, explain what it is. So the program is very interesting from AB and BAV because they took four main uh, problems that they have on climate action, circular packaging, smart agriculture and water uh, stewardship and ask it for startups to give some solutions, to come up with some solutions. That's why uh, we, we came up with uh, the, the solution of green mining on the circular packaging, because they had to go to have 100% of their products with packaging that is returnable or made of majority of recyclable content. So green mining understand that everyone has a social and environmental responsibility over the waste, which is a critical problem all over the world companies has a major responsibility over it because they uh, decide how they're going to provide their service or put their products on the market if it's going to be in a returnable a refillable or a one-way packaging in brazil the problem is a little bit worse because we recycle only 2.2 percent of the material that is collected and most part of it is done by informal workers with no labor rights but on the other hand, the recycling market is huge. We are talking about more than $300 billion market that we are all throwing in the trash. So to look for this opportunity, to explore this opportunity and to solve those problems, we created green mining, closing the loop of the circular economy. So what do we do? We adopt the urban mining concept, and that's uh, I'm liking a lot of the, the, the other presentations because uh, they're uh, seeing they're talking about the same thing, the uh, all the same the same goal. Uh, so urban mining is when we look at the cities and try to find uh, where the material, the recyclable material, is being generated in a cost-effective way. So one first highlight very is very important on our project and on how do we deal with the the waste. Um, sort at source, that's key for us. Because when we, you have everything segregated, we don't need to transport it to a sorting facility. We avoid the cost of a MRF with energy and people. We have cleaner and better quality material and we cut all the middlemen because everything is concentrated and shipped it straight to our recycling chain, our recycling company. So the key success factor is how do we structure an economic incentive to people start sorting. So how do we do that? With a lot of technology. So we are a clean tech. Uh, we have our, our co-founders are two uh, developers, system developers. So we created a waste finder system. Then we can find where the waste of the company is gonna be generated, we predict it. Then we put tracks with IoT to make the most effective collection. And we have 
full traceability by blockchain, guaranteeing that a post-consumer packaging is going to do the, sh the chain and reach a recycling facility. One important uh, part of, of our first phase, we hired away speakers. We formalized them, give them some dignity, working with all the protection needed uh, that all workers deserve. So uh, on our first phase uh, that we work at collecting materials on bars, restaurants, and hotels that we call the market B2B, uh, we collected more than 1 million and 400 kilos of material. We're talking about, I would say, uh, 7 million bottles of beers. Um, avoiding 240 tons of CO2 being emitted. Uh, we worked in Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro, and Brasilia this time and had a, um, a very nice recognition uh, 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 presenting green mining in many seminars and workshops. And uh, uh, we got some prizes all over the world. And now we are very glad to say that we are part of the United Nations Global Compact as well. So with ABM BEV that embraced us and now we are suppliers of ABM BEV, um, we collected, uh, we were aimed to collect more 4,000 tons this year, and we have opportunity for sponsorships and other clients like Natura Vaughn, Unilever, Action Nobel, and others that already make part of our uh, uh, project with other materials, having the synergy of collection for plastics and paperboards and other materials as well. But we know that in the uh, B2B market, there are only some part of the recyclables. But we have to understand how to engage the consumers. So on these two years of working with reverse logistics, uh, we find that there, there is a tripod that is very important to be uh, aware and to uh, address. First of all, talking about conscious, uh, education, and trust. You have, the people have to trust the, the chain, trust that the collection is going to be recycled. They have to see it and understand that they're doing the right thing. The other thing is availability. Uh, it, it must be an effortless operation. It doesn't matter if you put a, a point, uh, a drop off five kilometers from, the, from someone, they're gonna run it uh, to drop the, those materials. So it must be easy for people to engage. And for sure, incentive. And, and again, we're talking about incentive is a very important uh, uh, pillar for people engage on recycling to make a real turnaround of global recycling. And we're talking about economic incentive that makes people change their behavior and get on board. That's why I'm doing a, a little spoiler here on our phase two, uh, working with consumers and engage them through rewarding. So this month we are launching our platform to have everyone playing a role in the recycling chain. How does it work? People are gonna start uh, share, uh, sorting their material at home, glass with glass, paper with paper, uh, plastic with plastic. Somebody's gonna pick it up and drop off in a concentration point, which will be a franchise working with our system. Uh, this guy is gonna sell it and have all the revenue for him. They're gonna sell it for a recycling company because they have everything concentrated and very clean. And then we can certificate this, uh, this chain because we have everybody on our platform. And with the certification, we can have a revenue and share the value with everyone that played a role in the recycling chain. This is a totally scalable operation all over the world. So if you want to know a little bit more, this is our team. These are the co-founders, my partners, uh, and we are trying to uh, make something that we, uh, we, uh, uh, we learned inside ABM Bev is to dream big. So we are pushed harder to dream big and that's what we do. And that's green mining. Here's if you, anyone wants to talk with me, can email me or get a QR code on my LinkedIn. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for this opportunity. Now I'll leave you with, Ken, with an, another amazing uh, product, uh, project, co uh, Conscious Container. Thank you very much. Excellent presentation. We need more companies like your globally, Rodrigo. And this is uh, wonderful. So thank you. Um, all right, I'm going to move it over to, uh, to Karen now. So hold on one second. All right. All right, Karen, great. Let me unmute you. Oh, can you unmute yourself? Uh, she's having some issues. Can you unmute yourself, please? Yeah, let me get in. Hold on one sec, guys. Sorry. There we go. 
There you go. I think Thank we're you. both trying to do the same thing. Yes. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> All right. Well, hello, everyone. Rodrigo, great presentation. Um, every time I hear you speak or we talk, you're just really moving the needle down there in, in Brazil. And and quite frankly, all the, a lot of points that Rodrigo makes are really the same uh, for Conscious Container. So hello, everyone. I'm Karen McNamara, and I'm the founder of Conscious Container. I already introduced myself, so let me share my screen and give me a moment here. You should see a beautiful lake. Is that what you're seeing? Yeah. All right. And then let me do this. Go over here. Just a moment. I, uh, I fractured my, my right wrist and so I'm doing everything left-handed. So bear with me. All right. All good? Yes. Thank you. All right, let's get going. So, so hello everyone. Um, Conscious Container is about redefining the landscape of sustainable glass packaging. And we are based in California. And really what I wanted to do is, is take you through sort of who we are, what we do, um, provide an example, quite frankly, of our, our program with that we're the pilot we're running with uh, AB InBev. And I want to speak about you know the partners and working holistically on, on waste challenges. And lastly, really take you through the drivers that are really fueling the circular business that, that we're launching. So let's just dive right down into it. And I'm gonna get something started here, just a moment. Working left-handed all the time is not easy. All right, so I can keep track of my time. All right, so Conscious Container, as I talked, was founded as a benefit corporation. And one of the things I want to mention about this is that a benefit corporation allows us as a corporation to make business decisions that, that ba balance benefit and profit. And I think that that's a really important component to how we move you know, these uh, collaborative supply chains and circular businesses forward. Is it really, like Rodrigo was talking, let's, you know, let's work together and, and it's make it, you know, benefit for all. So that's a very important part of who Conscious Container is. And really what we're trying to do is bring refillable glass bottles back into our U.S. infrastructure and economy. And quite frankly, it's crazy that this system doesn't exist here. It did a long time ago and it exists all around the world, even down in, in you know, South America and Europe. Um, and really, I'm not going to talk about what the problem is. We all know it. It's our single-use packaging waste crisis. You know, that, I'm not going to get into that at all. Really, what we've done is we've run proof-of-concept refillable bottle pilots. That's where I started. And now we are working collaboratively, collaboratively with key stakeholders across the value chain. And really, this is how we're going to move into this environment where we are solving problems collectively. Uh, and this is just a picture you can see here. This is uh, in our refillable pilot and I'll talk with AB and Bev and I'll talk about that in a minute. So what Conscious Container does is we deliver the, you know, these products and services in the beer, wine, and non-alcoholic categories. So those are our customers. And what we're doing is we sell and washed and we sell new and washed refillable glass bottles. So that's, you know, we sell we're designing refill bottles. We'll sell those in, into the, into the uh, infrastructure. The second thing we do is we collect those glass bottles. The, the, the next thing is, oh, I've got my numbers wrong, sorry. Uh, we wash those refillable glass bottles. The, the refillable glass bottles that come into our system that are not refillable, we are going to separate those, those bottles out and those will go for recycled content into new bottles, right? So we, whether they come in and they're washed and refilled or they are, are bottles that we cannot do that with, those will go back basically to the glass manufacturers who are very, very interested in, in gaining the, um, the, the, the glass so they can have recycled content. And then the last thing is, is that we're bringing technology into this model via smart packaging. And I can talk a little bit more about that. So that is at the core of what we are implementing. And in full transparency, we are actually right now out raising capital to move this forward. And what I wanted to do is I want to take you through just briefly what, what this pilot looks like. And it's an example of the supply chain. So in the pilot that we have with AB and Bev, we've taken two brands. We've put about six, a very small pilot, but we've taken 16,000 bottles, put them into the marketplace. So they're going out to, out to the retail stores. 
we have two modes of collection. One of them is, is to drop them in our bins. That's a, a consumer engaged model. The other part is that they can bring those bottles into recycling centers and then we, we retrieve those bottles, which is another existing infrastructure that, that we, are, we have tapped into. The next thing you see is that the bottles are taken, they're gonna be washed. What's really great, in the United States, there's two craft brewers who actually have bottle washing, which is pretty amazing. So we've partnered up and I've worked with them for a while uh, out in Missoula, Montana. So they will wash the bottles in this case. And then those bottles will go back to AB InBev after they've been inspected, they will be refilled. And then one of the brands is actually going back into the marketplace. A key component, and you can see it with Rodrigo's business, is how do we bring technology in to really change the landscape here? So in this pilot, we're using QR code technology. Uh, we're working with one of our cohorts, uh, but this is really how, how we're gonna move the needle in regards to bringing circular packaging in, and innovating in this space. Sorry. Oh, and that's the next one. So I just have two more slides I wanna talk about waste challenges and strategies. And I'm gonna use AB InBev as the example here is this isn't the, the, the challenge I wanna put out and, and show the example is beverage producers and pack their waste, their produce, their packaging waste. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, so when you look at your full supply chain, it's not just from you know, creating the product, making sure that your you know, your internal systems are, are circular, but really the full life cycle of that product. So I wanted to show the example of what AB InBev is doing. So they are amazing working internally on reducing their packaging waste, but what they're doing that I believe is a great example is they are looking at their full supply chain. What is happening with their packaging? And I think that this is really um, a, a model and a best practice. And then also, you know, the due diligence, they brought folks in like Conscious Container to help them to try to solve that problem, you know, with, with due diligence and pilots. And really this is about collaboration. How do we collaborate throughout the select supply chain? And then how do we take action? That's really what, what is at the nut. We can talk and pilot and, you know, put grants out there. But really, it's about taking action. And taking action in this space means investment. And I just wanted to close out with, you know, what are the drivers that we're experiencing? So consumers are demanding change, right? Everybody knows there's a plastic waste problem out there. And so what's happening is corporations are responding to that with aggressive sustainability goals. And really, in order to move the needle, it requires capital. And the other piece, and we've talked about this earlier, and, and we are also working on this, is, is what is coming down the line is waste accountability legislation. And it's gonna, it's gonna work with corporations, work to engage corporations to be responsible for their end of life packaging. And we're currently working on some legislation here in California, and I'm really encouraging legislators and lobbyists and so forth let's come together on this, right? And figure out how we can all put together an economically viable solution. And once again, what's also starting to happen right now is returnable, refillable, that's a term that it's used different throughout the world, is there's data that's starting to come out and being, um, you know, there's some old data out there, but we're starting to see some new data. One example is right here. Uh, the Reloot platform in Zero Waste Europe has put out a document that's out there under the Reloop platform site that really talks about reusable and starting to put some data behind it. And that's one of our goals also as we move forward is we're gonna be collecting data that's gonna to help to show the economic viability of how we can all benefit from this system in, in all categories, quite frankly. So I'm gonna stop there, Scott, and turn it back over to you, but I really appreciate the opportunity to share what we're doing and really through the dynamic partnership with AB InBev, um, here we go.